So let's say we want to find the coordinates of the stationary point of y is equal to 5x minus 15 all to the power 4 minus 3 and determine the nature of this point. So what we're going to need to do to find the stationary point is to find the gradient function, the dy by dx. Because when we put that equal to 0, then we can find the stationary point. So that's what I'm first going to do. I'm going to find dy by dx. Now, because 5x minus 15 to the power 4 uh, is a composite function, it's a composition of 5x minus 15 and x to the power 4, I'm going to have to use the chain rule in order to differentiate it. Now, you can go about that using the u equals and the uh, y equals, okay, and go about it that way. Uh, I'm going to now incorporate the fast way of doing it. So I'm going to look at what is inside. I'm going to take the derivative of what's inside outside. So the derivative of 5x minus 15 is 5. So that comes out to the front. The 4 comes down to the front as well. So that goes down to the front. And then the bracket remains and take one off the power. The minus 3 on the outside will just differentiate to 0. So that won't be incorporated. So the derivative, dy by dx, the gradient function, is 20, 5x minus 15 cubed. So, stationary points exist when dy by dx is 0. So that's going to happen when this is equal to 0. Now, you can divide both sides by 20. You can cube root both sides. So it's when, so the stationary point exists when this 5x minus 15 is 0. So add 15 to both sides and divide both sides by 5, and we're going to get x is equal to 3. So we know that the x coordinate of the stationary point is at 3. So if I substitute in 3 into the original uh, function, y is equal to, so the notation that I can use is y is equal to when x is 3. When x is 3, y is equal to. 5 lots of 3 take away 15, well that's just 0. To the power of 4, well that's just 0 again, so minus 3. So the stationary point is at 3 minus 3. So that's the coordinates of the stationary point. Now we're also asked to determine the nature of this point. So what we can then do is we can either look at the gradient either side of, those, of that stationary point or we can work out the second derivative. So d2y by dx squared and substitute in my stationary point. So I'm going to do it that way, to find the second derivative. Now in order to do that, I'm going to have to use the chain rule again to differentiate that. So I've got that 20. The derivative of what's inside comes outside, so that would be 5. The index comes down on the front, so the 3 comes down. And then I have the 5x minus 15, and I take 1 off the power. Okay? Right, so I've got 20 times 5 times 3. So that's actually 300 times 5x minus 15 squared. So, if I evaluate the second derivative when x is 3, well actually I have 5 lots of 3 take away 15 is 0. So the second derivative is 0. So when the second derivative is 0, that could mean one of three things. We either have a maximum, or we have a minimum, or we have a point of inflection. So ultimately, we just don't know. So when your second derivative is zero, you can't tell. 
So that means that we're going to have to look at the gradient either side of the point. So this is where I'd get my calculator up. Okay? So calculator comes to the rescue. And we're going to look at the y by dx, the gradient of the curve, either side of the stationary point. So I'm going to look at when x is 2.9 first. So I'm going to substitute 2.9, so I'm going to look at 2.9 and 3.1, either side. So I'm going to substitute 2.9 into my first derivative. So I've got 20 times 5 lots of 2.9, take away 15, all cubed. So that's minus 5 halves. So that's negative. So then I'm going to look at the first derivative when x is 3.1. So I substitute 3.1 into this, 20 times 5 lots of 3.1, take away 15, cubed, is 5 halves. So I'm going from a negative to a positive gradient. So from a negative to a, sorry, from a negative to a positive and so the curve must do something like this. And so my stationary point must be between. So that must mean that this point is a minimum. Ooh, didn't do that very well. Let's retry that. Minimum. Okay. So the second derivative it's useful to know that you can use the chain rule again to work that out. But in this case, the second derivative didn't help us. And looking at the gradient either side of the stationary point was what allowed us to determine the nature of that stationary point, whether it was a maximum, minimum, or point of inflection.